most new streamers are often confused as to how to get their game from their computer to becoming a Twitch stream. So to combat this, Twitch created Twitch Studio, their own broadcasting software. It was a very user-friendly but limited streaming software that new streamers would use to go live. However, if you haven't heard, Twitch will discontinue support for Twitch Studio starting May 30th. They cited reasons as less than 4% of total hours of streaming coming from Twitch Studio users and that most people who start using Twitch Studio will eventually swap to a different software. So what should you do if you're a Twitch Studio user? A great alternative option is Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a comprehensive streaming solution with tools like alerts, chat boxes, tipping, overlays, chatbots, and more. They also have Streamlabs Desktop, which is their broadcasting software. It's very user-friendly, which is perfect for new streamers and automatically integrates with their existing tools. So there's no need to switch between different tools or manually adding browser sources. Also, for full transparency, this video is sponsored by Streamlabs. However, I've already made many videos covering their products and features, so everything I'm telling you isn't anything new. In this video, I will walk you through how to set up your streams in Streamlabs Desktop. To set up Streamlabs Desktop, you're going to want to go to streamlabs.com and click download desktop. After downloading, it will open onto the homepage, which will ask you what you plan on using Streamlabs Desktop for. We're going to check live streaming and then select which level you are. For the sake of this video, let's select beginner so it can walk us through how to set it up. Next, it will provide you options on importing your scenes from other sources. If you did use Twitch Studio, select this option to easily transition your existing scenes into Streamlabs Desktop. I'll select Start Fresh just for this tutorial. Then you want to select your webcam and microphone from the dropdowns, and it will take you to the Streamlabs Desktop Studio. So this is how my Streamlabs Desktop currently looks like, so let us populate this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go over here to where it says Scenes. You want to look at each scene like a page, and then on this page, we can go and put different items on it, like stickers, text, etc. You're going to hit plus to go add a new scene, and we're going to label this scene our just chatting scene. Under Sources, here's where you can add your elements. So we're going to hit plus and under essential sources, we're going to add a video capture device, which will be your webcam or camera. You can name this whatever you like. You're going to be the only one who sees this. So under this drop down, you're going to want to select your camera and make sure the resolution is that of your camera. So I do have a 1080p camera, so therefore my resolution is 1080p. So hello, it's me. Once you've added your camera to where you like it, we're going to go over here, hover over your source. If you click this lock icon, now it means you can't accidentally click and drag your camera around. I recommend locking all sources you don't plan on modifying. The next thing we're going to want to do is hit plus again, and we are going to add an audio input capture. We're going to click add source. So name this whatever you'd like. And under device, you're going to want to select your device. So for me, it would be my Wave XLR. And then as you can see here, it will bounce up as I'm talking. The next thing we're going to want to do is add chat onto screen so people can see, you know, what messages people are sending. Under sources, we're going to hit plus. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says widget, and we're going to add a chat box. Click add source and here you can select what theme you would like it to be. So I personally like the clean layout. I also did modify my CSS on my text specifically. If we scroll down, we can also check which badges you would like to show and the color of the text, the font size, and you can modify custom code, which I have. So this is relatively large for a chat box. I like to make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't intersect with my body as a person. And I like putting it kind of in a corner of your stream like here. Next thing we're going to add is an alert box. So if people don't know, sub etc follow you that it would actually show up on screen so under sources we're going to click plus and we're going to go to alert box so click add source you can name it alert box and we're going to want to make sure we have everything checked and hit close now right here you can see the green outline of the alert box this is really big i personally like making my alert box smaller around this size as you see here and i recommend putting it in some dead space of your stream so you don't want it overlapping your face of course and any important gameplay so if you play a F FPS game, probably the middle of the screen, not ideal to put it in. So I recommend sticking it in some corner, like top right, um, top left, bottom right, bottom left. Sorry, I can't tell left from right, but because the video is mirrored, it actually was correct this time. And here we have the very basics of what you need for a just chatting scene. So next up, we're going to want to add a gameplay scene. One thing that's a super helpful of a shortcut because I'm lazy, we can actually go to the first scene we made, the just chatting scene, right click this and click duplicate. And we're just going to name this gameplay. What this does is it literally duplicates the scene with all of the sources added. So I have my alert box still. I still have my chat box. My camera is still here. And now we can kind of move things around a little bit. Work smarter, not harder. So I'm going to unlock my camera here and I'm going to make it smaller because I don't need to be that big on my gameplay scene. 
Also, pro tip, if you hold Alt on your keyboard and you drag the edges, you can actually crop your camera or any other source for that matter just for one scene. So I have cropped myself here on my gameplay scene. If I go back to my just chatting scene, you can see I'm still very full screen. So I'm gonna take myself and stick myself in some bottom corner here. I'm gonna go in this corner because I did put my chat box on this side. Now under sources, we're gonna click plus and we're gonna go under general sources and we're gonna add a display capture. This will capture everything that is on your selected monitor. I'm gonna set the capture method to automatic and display to my primary monitor and let's make this a little smaller. So the way the sources work is it needs to be layered correctly. Whatever is on top of the layer is going to be whatever is shown at the forefront of your stream. So I need to drag my display capture all the way to the bottom so my webcam can show up and so my other elements can show up. And here we go. We have the most basic stream setup possible, but we can spruce this up a little bit. Another thing that I recommend all streamers have added to their streams is a follower goal and a sub goal. The reason being is when you have goals visible to the viewer, then they know what you're working towards and they want to help contribute to it. And again, because Streamlabs has great integrations with their widgets, you can add this in just a couple clicks. We're going to go under sources and under widgets, we're going to add a follower goal. So here you can add a title to your goal, then you can add a goal amount and you can add a starting amount. And when this goal is to end, I just kind of put like a random arbitrary far away goal and then you click start goal. You can also go under visual settings and you can change things like the bar color. And then you can also change the format to standard instead of condensed. I personally think condensed looks prettier and you can also change the background color and the thickness of the bar. And once you're done with your little goal, then we can stick it somewhere on stream. I don't like putting it dead center. So I'm just going to click it and drag it into an off corner of our stream. Another thing we can add is a sub goal. So under sources, we're going to click plus. So for this one, we can add it a little bit differently. We're going to add it as a stream label. So we're going to click stream label and we're going to click add source. I'm going to call this one sub goal. So under label type, you can select from a wide variety of things, basically any achievement on your stream. So for this, I'm going to scroll down to where it says session subscriber count. So what this is, is the amount of subs you have per stream. And once your stream is over, it will reset this number back down to zero. Under label template, it will have squiggly bracket and then word squiggly bracket, which will pull the number of subs you have until you reset it. But you can add words around that. So I'm just going to put daily sub goal colon. And then next to this, I'm going to type slash and then 20 because I use a goal of 20. And then here we can also change the fonts to something cuter like baby pumpkin. You can change the size of the font to make it a little bigger. And we can do things like adding a gradient if you would like. One thing that I like is adding an outline so the text shows up better. So I'm going to make the outline thickness maybe 10. And I'm going to change the outline color to something prettier. And once we're done, we're just going to go and place this where we'd like. I'm just going to put it cleanly on top of my little follower goal. Let's make it a little smaller. And now we have a daily sub goal using stream labels and a follower goal using the follower goal widget. So Streamlabs again has amazing integrations with their existing tools. So if you go over here to the left hand side, it will say overlays and this will take us to their overlay shop with tons of amazing ready-made overlays. So some of these premium animated overlays are available as part of Streamlabs Ultra. However, if we go to search, we can actually search for free and check out hundreds of free options. So I'm going to select this bloom one that looks really pretty. And if you would like to install it, just click install. So once you've hit install, it will actually open up a new scene tab. So if I click here, you can see my collections. It will open one with the name of the overlay you selected with the scenes that it comes with. So this one comes with a live scene, a BRB scene, and a stream starting soon scene. So what we can do is customize the scenes. So for example, here with my camera, I am a little small. So I'm just going to go and drag myself to be zoomed into the way I like. And remember how I told you, you can hold alt on your keyboard to click and crop just for one scene. Well, you're just going to want to crop your camera so you fit very nicely in there. Also, we're just going to want to adjust everything that needs to be customized. So here, how it says your name, we're going to right click it under source, go to properties and change it to your actual name. We can do the same thing on our BRB scene. So again, I'm going to want to make sure my cam is bigger. 
And we're gonna wanna change the name of the handles to match our social media. Also, before we start streaming, we also wanna check our settings to make sure we have everything set up optimally. So to do that, we're gonna go to the bottom left where it says settings. This is where you can click this button to restart your stream labels. So it can reset this counter back down to zero. One thing that I personally find very helpful is this button here that says show confirmation dialogue when starting streams. A big fear that a lot of streamers have is misclicking the go live button and then just randomly going live. So by checking this, instead of of actually going live, it will give me a confirmation that I will have to check. You can also toggle on automatically record when streaming if you want, instead of to download the VOD off Twitch, which might lower the quality, to also record right onto your computer. So under output, under streaming, we're going to want to check our video bit rate. So your video bit rate is relative to the internet you have. You want it to be higher if you have good internet because then you will have a higher stream quality. So I recommend a standard video bit rate of around 3000 for streamers. If you have bad internet, 2500 might be good. If you have good internet, you can set it to 4000 and that would let you stream at 1080p. You don't need to exceed 4000. It is a bit excessive. So under recording, if you do record with Streamlabs, you just wanna make sure you are recording to a folder that you can remember. So figure this one out. Recording quality, same as stream is perfectly fine. And format, you want to select MP4. It is much smaller than other formats, but it's also very compatible with a lot of editing softwares. So under video, this is where we're gonna wanna check. Currently my base canvas resolution is 1920 by 1080 and the output scaled resolution is what it gets downscaled to to Twitch. So if we have this at 720, then you're gonna be streaming at 720p. If you wanna stream at 1080p, then make sure you have 1080 selected. Also for FPS, I like setting my FPS to 60, but if you do find that you are lagging a little bit, you might wanna drop this down to 30. Another one is hotkeys. So this one is very fun and I like doing this, where under your scenes, if we open this, you can actually bind a hotkey to switch to scene. So for instance, I can bind mine to, I don't know, my home button. So what this means is if I press the home button on my keyboard, it will then swap me to my just chatting scene. So if you don't believe me, I am on my gameplay scene. Here's my keyboard. My home button is this one. And if I click it, now I'm on my just chatting scene. It's just a little helpful tool if you kind of have your hands tied or if you're streaming with one monitor that you can kind of click buttons and swap your scenes around. Under appearance, if you truly are that person, you can swap it to light mode. I should have given y'all a jump scare warning. Also, I think this one is really cool. Under the remote control tab, if you scan this QR code, you can actually control Streamlabs desktop from your phone. So if you do have only one monitor, this is a cool option as well where you can moderate your own stream and like, swap scenes and stuff from your device. Another thing that I think is really helpful for those who stream with one monitor is the enable in-game overlay. If you toggle this on, it will actually show chat and recent events on your computer as you're streaming so that when you're gaming, you can just read chat without having to have your phone open. Also, you can customize the layout of Streamlabs to your liking. So if we go over here to the layout editor, you can actually change the format of how this is arranged. So we can have something like this or like this with chat as one large bar or two sides. So you can drag and drop to place things wherever you would like from the side. So if you want your audio mixer over here, we can drop that here and have our source selector on the other side. So I'm gonna save the changes and now you can see my new layout. And if we click this on the right hand side here, I can open up chat. It does show your viewer count, which I personally like to toggle off. And to do that, we just click it. Streamlabs desktop also has other amazing tools that are great for streamers. One of these being dual output, which allows it to output both horizontally and vertically simultaneously. The first thing we're gonna do is go to settings and under stream, you're gonna wanna make sure you have at least one vertical platform connected. So I connected my TikTok and now we're gonna go over to video and check enable dual output. Now we both have a video output for horizontal and for vertical. So I'm gonna make my base canvas resolution 1080 by 1920 and my output also 1080 by 1920 with 60 FPS. So now when I go over to my Streamlabs, I can see both a horizontal and a vertical output and we can go and modify both. So I can go and modify my vertical output to my liking. Let's make our alert box a little bit smaller. And then once you are satisfied and you're ready to stream, we're gonna click the go live button in which you can go and add the destination of your other platform. For me, it would be TikTok. And you can select whether you want this to output horizontal or vertically. If you have Streamlabs Ultra, you can add up to four different output destinations. Another cool thing Streamlabs Desktop has to offer is Collab Cam, in which you can collab with your friends on stream and feature both of your cams. To do this under sources, we're gonna click plus and we're gonna want to go and select Collab Cam. Name this whatever you want and follow these steps. 
So you will provide your friends with this link and you can add one guest for free. If you do have Streamlabs Ultra, you can add up to 11 guests. And if you guys don't know what Streamlabs Ultra is, it is the extra boost that you can get in their Streamlabs suite. So everything that you need to stream is completely free with Streamlabs, but they have extra additions that you can get with Streamlabs Ultra. Besides what I already mentioned, you can get access to their full app library, custom tip page and domain, a custom name cloud bot, and access to the pro versions of their other apps like CrossClip, Video Editor, Podcast Editor, and Talk Studio. And with the code Ultra Studio, you can get a seven day free trial. I hope this helps you set up your streams to run beautifully using Streamlabs desktop in just one quick video. If you like this video, I would appreciate it so much if you'd like to subscribe and thank you so much to Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. To get Streamlabs desktop for yourself, just click the link down below. Don't forget to check me out on an Etsy in which I sell Twitch overlays, emotes, assets to spruce up your streams and on Coffee, in which I offer free resources for streamers and content creators and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I stream three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. PST. I hope to catch you guys there or in another one of my videos. Peace.